Friday the 13th Part 6 Jason Lives is the sequel that the fans demanded and the fans got. Fans weren't happy with the imposter Jason in the previous film, so they had to resurrect the real deal for Part 6. That being said, let's check out some things you didn't know about Jason Lives. Number 1. John Shepard, the actor who played Tommy Jarvis in the previous film, didn't reprise his role because he became a born-again Christian and decided to make an attempt at becoming a minister rather than an actor. John eventually went back to the film business as a producer, co-founding the company M Power Pictures, who you may know for their film Machine Gun Preacher. Huh, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Number two, just like many of the other sequels, this one also had a fake working title. This one went by the fake title of Aladdin Sane, after the David Bowie album of the same name. Read that title, syllable by syllable, and you may catch a subtle connection to Part Six's protagonist. You know, if the institution ever found out about this, they would haul our butts back in and straight check them. Number three, in spite of most films in the series being notorious targets for the MPAA, during production, Paramount executives actually felt that Jason Lives could have earned a PG-13 rating and wanted director Tom McLaughlin to amp up the gore and swearing. When the film went to the ratings board, the studio must have been pleased to know that they demanded cuts to get an R rating, part of the course for a true F-13 film. Still, this is the only film in the franchise that doesn't feature any nudity, despite the fact that there's multiple sex scenes. Number 4. In the original version, the caretaker at the cemetery wasn't going to be killed by Jason and would show up for a scene at the end of the film, a scene in which fans would finally be introduced to Jason Voorhees' father. In the original script, Jason's father visits his son's grave. It would be revealed that he was paying the caretaker extra money to take special care of Jason's grave, as well as Pamela Voorhees' grave. Number 5. Tom McLaughlin was actually offered the chance to direct Scream in the mid-90s, a gig which he turned down. He would later meet writer Kevin Williamson, who cited the self-awareness of McLaughlin's Jason Lives as an influence on Scream. Number 6. Dan Bradley took on the role of Jason Voorhees, but it only lasted for a single day. Paramount thought that the man was too fat. So, they had him replaced with stuntman C.J. Graham. Still, one scene exists in the film with Dan Bradley as Jason. It was the infamous paintball scene. Number 7. The scene in which Jason's neck is split open by a boat propeller was shot in Tom McLaughlin's parents' swimming pool. Unfortunately for his parents, this ruined the pool filter. Number 8. Nancy McLaughlin was damn near killed while filming the scene in which Jason rams a spear through her car's windshield. The slippery surface of the windshield caused the trajectory of the spear to go the opposite way it was intended and almost impelled the actress. And yes, the spear was very real and very sharp. Number 9. Originally, Melanie Kinnaman was going to reprise her role as Pam in Friday the 13th Part 6, but with John Shepard declining to return as Tommy Jarvis, she was cut from the script. It was believed that her role would only draw more attention to the fact that Tommy Jarvis isn't being played by the same actor as in the previous film. Number 10. The RV crash scene, which offers up some of the most beautiful cinematography ever seen in a Friday the 13th film, was the last scene shot for the movie. This was also the most nerve-wracking scene for McLaughlin, as he had only one take to get the scene right. Also, it was a very dangerous scene for stuntman C.J. Graham. And that's it for our list of things you didn't know about Jason Lives, Friday the 13th Part 6. We hope you enjoyed the video and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, talkers.